Hello all, welcome back to Nanotech. Today's topic is nanomaterials for radiation shielding in space. In the last few decades, space exploration has become vital to science and engineering. For human space applications, spacecraft have been developed with extra heavyweight shielding materials due to the significant challenges in decreasing hazardous space radiation. These radiations are composed of ionizing and non-ionizing radiations. The primary concern in space exploration is ionizing radiation due to the particle's high energy levels, which ionizes matter as it comes in contact. Ionizing radiation can be divided into three categories, solar particle events, galactic cosmic rays, and radiation trapped in the Van Allen belts around the Earth. Let's explain in details. Solar particle events. Solar particle events occur when protons emitted by the sun become accelerated either close to the sun during a flare or in interplanetary space by coronal mass ejection shocks. The events can include other nuclei such as helium ions and highly charged and energetic ions. During a large solar particle event, the fluence of protons with energies greater than 30 megavolts can exceed 10 to the power 10 centimeters square in several hours or days, which can deposit large radiation doses for crew and equipment that are not adequately protected. Galactic Cosmic Radiation Galactic cosmic radiation is a dominant source of radiation that must be dealt with aboard current spacecraft and future space missions within our solar system. Galactic cosmic radiation comes from outside the solar system but primarily from within our Milky Way galaxy. Galactic cosmic radiation is composed of the nuclei of atoms that have had their surrounding electrons stripped away and are traveling at nearly the speed of light. Another way to think of galactic cosmic radiation would be to imagine the nucleus of any element in the periodic table from hydrogen to uranium. Now imagine that same nucleus moving at an incredibly high speed. The high-speed nucleus you are imagining is galactic cosmic radiation. These particles were probably accelerated within the last few million years by magnetic fields of supernova remnants. Galactic cosmic radiation and solar particle events can also form secondary neutron radiation after interacting with matter. These secondary neutrons have the capability to cause the highest level of damage since it is difficult to block them by magnetic and electric fields. How much space radiation are astronauts exposed to? Beyond low Earth orbit, space radiation may place astronauts at significant risk for radiation sickness and increased lifetime risk for cancer central nervous system effects, and degenerative diseases. Research studies of exposure in various doses and strengths of radiation provide strong evidence that cancer and degenerative diseases are to be expected from exposures to galactic cosmic rays or solar particle events. Astronauts are exposed to ionizing radiation with effective doses in the range from 50 to 2000 mSv. 1 mSv of ionizing radiation is equivalent to about 3 chest X-rays. Nanomaterials for radiation shielding. Nanomaterials could play a significant role as multifunctional radiation shielding materials in space. Nanomaterials for radiation shielding has been on the shielding of neutrons, which are the largest radiation component of concern from nuclear reactors. In space travel, neutrons, although not the primary concern, are generated as secondary particles from the interactions of the galactic cosmic radiation and solar particle events with matter. Some chemical elements with high thermal neutron absorptions are boron, lithium, and gadolinium. Nanoparticles of gadolinium, which has the highest neutron absorption cross-section of all the elements, and boron, which also has a high neutron absorption cross-section, are, hence, excellent candidates for neutron shielding. The neutron absorption cross-section for the isotope 10b is 3835 barns, so enriching boron compounds with 10b would produce even better protection against neutrons. Compounds of boron, specifically boron carbide and hexagonal boron nitride in nanomaterial form, have been used in neutron shielding materials for potential applications, including nuclear, medical, industrial, and research. Nanocomposites for neutron shielding Boron and its low atomic number compounds are suitable for space neutron shielding applications. The heavier elements are not suitable because their high atomic weight leads to fragmentation yielding secondary radiation. Shielding from space radiation. Basically, galactic cosmic radiation particles, which are positively charged particle, mostly interact with materials through Coulomb interactions with their negative electrons and positive nuclei, and to a much lesser amount, through atomic nuclei collisions. 
For these reasons, the charge to mass ratio of the materials roughly correlates with an increase in the energy loss of galactic cosmic radiation particles. Hydrogen, with the highest charge to mass ratio of any element, provides the best shielding. Because a shield of pure hydrogen is not practicable, hydrogen containing materials make the most suitable candidates for shielding against galactic cosmic radiation. Nanotubes have been favored to store hydrogen over particles and sheets because they have greater surface areas and higher hydrogen binding energies. Because BNNTs, CNTs, and other nanostructured materials have the theoretical capacity to store hydrogen and because hydrogen is ideal for radiation shielding, the addition of hydrogen containing nanostructures could improve the radiation shielding effectiveness of the resulting materials for shielding from GCR and SPES. Nanometals are important for shielding electronics in spacecraft, especially from electrons and gamma rays. Nanomaterials could play a role in components and subsystems for the development of active radiation shielding systems, such as magnetic or electrostatic shielding systems, in the future. Thank you for watching. See you soon with another interesting topics.